<laughs> not me being live and not part of the stream because I didn't add myself in. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Sorry that I'm a couple minutes late. Jan and I are in the middle of doing a 24-hour readathon. And I'm a little sleepy and delirious. Hi, Melka. Jan is pouring some rosé. And I'm very excited. But I'm going to give it some time for people to trickle in. And mm, reinforcements. Yes. Do you want me to scoot a chair over? Sorry, I just took your chair. I have a chair? I love you now. Just sit in my lap. Okay. <laughs> No, Malka says, I have grape juice. I love that. I made apple juice. I was going to say strawberry juice. That's not even a freaking thing. Um, why is this on? Why do I look like the Fresh <laughs> Prince of Bel Air right now? You know? Okay. Not half Let's of your share. face. She also, said, where's the brightness? Why is it so dark? Um, don't be racist. Oh, my God. I knew you were going to say that. I just can't see myself. But yeah, Jan really needs to see herself. Is, do you like that? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Oh I'm my. blind now. It's fine. Blinded by your beauty. Oh my gosh. Shut up. Shut up. Body Queer Reads is in the house. Cat Apocalypse. Hey. I'm in the spirit of alcoholic beverages. Get it? The spirit? Mm -hmm. Also, because spirit, that's. I meant like spirit because we're. Oh, we're I thought spirits. we were talking about, you know, the purpose. Double of this entendres. Line. Okay. Great. Damn. I still got to finish. I'm so day. delirious, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I just woke them up from a nap. Yes. Yeah. I was like, two minutes. Two minutes. Okay. So this is, of course, the live show, not two people having loved it. <laughs> because we're annoying. Because we're annoying. Uh, yeah. This is going to be the live show for the July book, uh, Dear Centron by Aquike Amezi, Aquike Amezi's memoir. I am laughing because, hi, Rachel. Hi, Ruby Rachel. says, wait, no wig. And for those of you who aren't watching my Instagram, um, Jan and I have been doing a Daria and Jane thing. And yesterday I was dressed up as Daria and I got this like Daria wig. And it's pretty cool. It was very extra. It was very extra. I'm wearing the wig in the vlog. It's I was very dedicated to. I had to make sure that the the tatas were away. No, <laughs> no. I'm on a Stop live checking me out. Ah, we're gonna inappropriate. Not you getting me demonetized. So much Not you leaving. Okay, oh, so. Body queer reads has some rum. Love that. I absolutely love that. So. Let us talk about Dear Centron. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm just going to say it. Um, Dear Centron is my favorite book of the year. There's no way that another book will top this one for me. And it is not only my favorite book of the year, but it is my new favorite book of all time, which is really exciting. Cause... Except I cried and they didn't. So. Yeah. Well, also, I haven't finished <laughs> Dead Inside. That's why I didn't cry. Um, I'm on page 156. So those of you who have read the book, what did you rate it? Obviously, gave it five out of five stars for myself. Hey, Burrows and Books. What is up? Yeah, me, my love. <clears throat> Not me dying. <clears throat> it's our Quinn. Oh, my gosh. I love Quinn. I love Quinn and Cammie. No, it's like, it's our Quinn. Daria, Jane, and Quinn. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Sure, Diane. Quinn is... Sorry, sister. I'm so tired. No drinking yet. We're going to the bar later tonight. Ooh, okay. Look at you. Can you imagine going to a bar right now? No. <laughs> That's not in our nature. There's no. <laughs> we don't have that in us. No. We've been staying in the whole time I was here. Yeah, we ventured out for mac and cheese and look how that ended. <laughs> yeah. We just had some learned the worst mac and cheese that we've ever eaten. It was twelve freaking dollars. It was vegan. And I thought it was really gonna slap, especially because it took like for a half minutes. hour yeah. for um like then them to bring it out. We got it to go. And it was it was um it was interesting. Yeah. It was a creative it was experimental mac and cheese. 
Um, Experiment failed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Body Queer Reads, I gave the book five out of five stars. I would give it more if that was possible. Look, this book is just the most heavy, poignant, visceral reading experience that I've ever had in my life. And so I relate to this desire to rate the book higher than five stars because it was like physically living a Quake's experiences, at least for me. I can't speak for, for Jan. I haven't finished it yet, but yeah, I agree. Oh, so good. Like each chapter was just, just hit so different and so heavy and it was amazing. It was so freaking good. Uh, Rachel says, hasn't, haven't read it yet, but I just joined because you're doing a live stream. Aww. Thank you for showing up, doing support. We, I mean, the book isn't something that you can spoil, right? There's yeah. no, it's their life. Yeah. Um, so those of you who haven't read the book, you can totally stay in chill if you want yeah, to. Yeah, I'm here. I'm <laughs> here. <laughs> At least you've read half of the book. Yeah. You've read, you know. I'm less than a hundred pages away from finishing. Um, just say it was gross. <gasps> Andy, hi Andy. Wait, where is it? Oh yeah, yeah, okay. She's just... the one who made these bookmarks. Oh my god, those are so freaking cool. Red yeah, by Andy. Yeah, that's really. It cool. looks so good with this book too, like with the with the leopard and. Mm -hmm. It's it's perfect. It looks like you made that bookmark for, for Dear Santana. You know, mac and cheese with ketchup. Look, Chanel, I would be willing to eat that mac and cheese with ketchup. I would be willing to put anything on it if it meant that it would taste better than the way it did when they brought it out. Where was the seasoning? So like we even added salt, pepper, red chili flakes, added hot sauce. I we were a mad scientist. We were just adding, it didn't, it, it gave us nothing. Like tell me that this doesn't look like mac and cheese. This looks, Does this look like mac and cheese? This looks repulsive. <laughs> it's experimental. That's vegan bacon. I didn't eat a single one. I'm scared to It wasn't it. bad. Oh. It, it kind of tastes like mushrooms. It looks burnt as... I don't know if I can swear. Is that okay? I, yeah. I think you can swear. So for those of you who... <laughs> right? For those of you who don't know, Quick A uses only they, them pronouns in neutral language. But to answer this question, yes, it was better than fresh water, in my opinion. Um, I think that fresh water, of course, being an amazing book. Why are you laughing? Chanel's gone. Oh, why is it falling? <laughs> my my salad, my mac and cheese. Oh, I was like, oh no, is it my strap? Not a sad salad. <laughs> a sad lid. Ew, no, never again. Sorry. Continue your oh, um God. coherent deep talk. Oh, that I'm what was I saying? No, you're not ruining anything. You're keeping me awake. So. Um, fresh water. It was better than fresh water. Better than fresh water. Yes, because I think that it dug deeper. I know that it digs deeper into the spirit than fresh water does. And obviously, fresh water is already such a deep work of spirit. Um, so I feel like it's more raw. It is more visceral. It's more violent and I'll explain that comment in a little bit but yeah I just I think that all of the emotions were really brought to the forefront and it's both more what's the word I'm looking for it's like it gives the reader more of an experience of what it's like to be Obanje than Freshwater Freshwater was just like I'm throwing you into Obanje life without giving like explanations, which is totally fine, you know? Um, but I just felt so much, it just felt so much more intimate, this memoir, which makes sense because it's a memoir. But oh, Freshwater is fiction. Freshwater is fiction. It's semi-autobiographical. Gotcha. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's spiritual realism fiction. And it was a quick aid said that they didn't think that they could write Dear Centron if Freshwater hadn't come first, because that was them. That was like their first foray into being public about what they are. 
and um, it was kind of like an unlayering. So honestly, these two works feel almost complementary to me. It's like Freshwater is the introduction into the world of spirit and Obanje, uh, como se dice, um, when you're reborn, reincarnation. Um, and then Dear Sentinel is like part two, you know? Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I haven't read Freshwater. Oh my god, maybe you this. This is the only okay I read. I started Death of Vivek OG. I saw DNF, but after this, I'll go back to it. It's about to be the death of Jam. Oh my god, not <laughs> you not having read anything about my favorite author. Okay. Um not you having not read Addie LaRue. They did just finish a dowry of blood today and they gave it five out of five stars. Five out of five stars. So freaking good. It was great. You have taste sometimes. <laughs> I mean, I'm friends with y'all. Stop. Stop. Okay. So, but as Jesse's backup BFF, I had to come support. Look, um, I might need just to replace this whole model because this whole model hasn't read. No. I love you. I'm here to stay. Oh my God. Don't do that. I'm going to fall asleep. Tomorrow morning. I'm here to stay until tomorrow morning. I don't want to leave. Mm -hmm. No, not in January. Still oh, using God. that? I have like. Seven of them. Of course, I want to use them. I love them. That's so everyone, cute. go check out Andy's Andy's Etsy bookmarks shop. Etsy shop. Um, it's What's read it by Andy. Read by Andy. Okay, okay, cool. I'm definitely gonna check. If I don't remember because I have the brain of a goldfish right now because I'm exhausted, please remind. Please remind us. Okay, so Body Queer Read says a quick a was really as I was reading the book. They're so fun. I think there's a word missing, but. I'm going to fill in the blank. Akwehe was really serving as I was reading the book. Let us know, Ari, what you meant by that. <laughs> I can't, I, I'm unable to complete that sentence. Um, but yeah, like, I guess this is a really good point to bring up, though. There is a lot of, like, playfulness in Dear Sentran. There is a lot of, like, yes, a lot of it is about suicidality and fighting and uh, trying to unravel the skins that you are bound to but there's also bits where Koike is writing about the elation of being in the public eye and about being recognized not like literally recognized but having their work recognized and about getting paid more and more and being able to travel and mark their face and do rituals and like having financial freedom especially coming from a childhood where they were very very poor um oh gosh the cockroaches and the, the yes the, the cockroaches and the fridge fridge like laying the eggs, eggs. <laughs> <laughs> not me going into detail okay so um yeah definitely i agree it's it's an interesting book because it's almost like getting whiplash because you'll read these parts where Kweke is talking about I loved this metaphor where they, they they talk about the boxing ring as a metaphor for uh death about like literally fighting death um and the embodiment of death and then you'll have chapters where they're like yes like getting money oh my <laughs> you know god yes i, mean? I just like, read that part. yes yeah just like giving financial advice and, and like i loved where they there's a i don't know if you got if that was in this was in that chapter that you read but they said they talked about spells and casting spells and they were like yeah there's some i forget what it, the word is exactly but they're like this is the spell for how to manifest what you want into the world how to create i think i think what they said was how to bend worlds into being. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. That part, that part, that part, that part. It just, yes, it it is very fun. It is incredibly fun. I have a question. What was mm -hmm. everyone's like favorite chapters? Ooh, Wait, okay, so the chapters good. are like named after there's... people. Okay, it's not their spirits. Or are some of them their spirits? Um I think there's an Ashugara chapter. Yeah. Yeah. So, so some, of some of them are. Because I know one was yeah, yeah. obviously Toni Morrison. Yes. And one of them is addressed to, isn't one addressed to Jesus? It's not I called Jesus, but like, it's like, there's one about Christ. Mm, I I'm know. pretty I sure. There, but. Yeah. 
Um, but yes, it's mainly the human beings in Okweke's life that mm -hmm. the chapters are are named after. I like the Dear Nonso one. Oh. And the Dear Daniel. I like Dear Eugene too. What was the theme of Dear, Dear Eugene? What was like the Yikes. the central? Not <laughs> okay. I'm gonna go through. I just made a list. I didn't know what was gonna. Where are we? Oh, the how do you say that? Elogasa. Elogosa. Elogosa. Oh yeah, that that one's one really spirits. good too. Okay, that one's the one I just posted on my story about twice. Oh, like, that was right from the. Mm -hmm. Gosh, these lines are just beautiful. They're so beautiful. Um. Mm. Oh, dear Eugene was the steamy parts. That's why I like. Oh, really? <laughs> nice. So, sorry, I'm just reading these comments. Um, I find it very interesting that they chose the exact same artist for the cover of this book than their debut, not her. Also, you make me scared because honestly, Freshwater was already tough. I think that Dear Centron is more accessible than Freshwater. Freshwater has this abstractness to it, but Akweke really just lays it out plain and simple in Dear Centron, um, which is why I say that they're like complementary because. Freshwater is the more like abstract. Abstract. And then Dear Senthanon is just a lot more just straightforward. Like, this is what it is. This is what I am. This is how I, I move through the world. And yeah, so I think I I think that Freshwater is fantastic, but I think that Dear Senthanon is a really good place to start with a quick ace works, to be honest because it explains so clearly um what they are you know and that makes it, that puts into context the rest of their books but it's also their best book in my opinion so it always sucks when you start with an author's best book you know not that all of them i gave all of their books five out of five stars so not the dog barking can y'all hear that <laughs> Um, Jesse playing Mad Libs with comments. I don't get it. Mad Libs. Oh, filling in the the blank. Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> now I miss Mad Libs. I know. Same. I should just buy one for shit. Oh no, they have online stuff. We should do. Yeah, we should do an online Mad Libs <laughs> when we're drunk enough. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Just I'm begging. The alcohol wakes me up. I'm begging for help. I'm screaming for help. <laughs> also, I follow a messy on Insta. Oh my god, their commentary, their feature photography. It's everything I love. It is so interesting to watch them be photographed, especially the photograph that was used for the cover of Time Magazine. Have you seen that? Oh, it is glorious. Really beautiful. Yeah. Akweke literally said, I'm a god. Here's why. Like, it just, that photo snaps at eight. Do you it's see? Amazing. <laughs> right, exactly. Like, I've been captured in my true form. Incredible. Cool. Oh, this? Um, yeah. Will you show the yeah. camera that cover for those of you who haven't seen it? Golden hour, baby. Mm -hmm. And this photo. So for those of you who don't know, Akweke made it onto the cover of Time Magazine. I think it's two months ago. That's wild. Yes. Just is just living their best life. And the photo that was taken, they were photographed in their home in Louisiana, which is also really cool because that was them in their natural element. Is that in Shiny? Yes, that is that shiny, is so the God cool. house. Mm -hmm. They also have an Instagram for their house, too, because it's incredible. What? Yeah, it's called shiny, the God house. It's amazing. I'm shocked. It's really amazing. Um, I was going to say something else in regards to that. Oh, I don't know if anybody knows this. I'm I'm sure y'all probably do. But a quick Mezzi just scored a seven-figure book deal. Goals. Yeah, it was, wait, it was either, a, no, 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 not a book deal. It was a seven figure, is it a book deal or an adaptation thing? No, 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 I think it was a book deal because they sold their romance book, which is coming out in 2022. I think that sold for seven figures, which yeah. is just wild. Yeah, it's so wild. They said that was their next goal, so. They did, like they just whole ass manifested that into being. being. Okay, so the Jesus chapter is Yeshua. 
Mm, I knew, yeah, I knew it wasn't Christ. I knew it was something else. Okay, cool. Thank you, Kat. Um, da -da -da. <gasps> I appreciated how confident and assured they were, especially after reading The Year Without oh, a Name. No. Look, so I'm trying to, I always am trying. This is why we didn't have a live show for A Year Without a Name and why I haven't reviewed it yet. Because that was our June non-binary book club pick. And they told me to DNF it, if that tells you anything. <laughs> I didn't have a live show for it because I have nothing good to say about that book. Like, there, nothing good to say about that memoir. And I don't want to shred someone's memoir, you know? Like, I don't want to shred someone's lived life experiences. But it wasn't... It wasn't the experiences that were was not good. It was the writing, like this, like trying intentionally to be abstract, and then just throwing in these really long, pretentious. I just, I just, didn't. as Chanel would say, for the word count. For the word count, <laughs> I couldn't. I could not. Even after the, after the end of the memoir, it was just like vignettes and not good ones. Okay, so takes a drink nonchalantly. I'm sorry. See, this is why I didn't have a live show or a review because I just like, I physically, I'm not good at lying. And no. see, I'm gonna stop talking about this thing before. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It's not my life. <laughs> sorry. Not me vomiting into my yeah. glass. <laughs> Drinks. Bottoms up. Bottoms up. I don't know the rest of the song. Okay. <laughs> not Jan ignoring me okay um <gasps> live footage <laughs> Yeshua gotta grab my copy whoops okay I love how literally all of you know the name of the chapter and I who's like it's my favorite book of the year and it's my new favorite book of all time that's how I called dear Christ <laughs> dear Christ <laughs> yo what is that voice that just came out of me I'm so sorry y'all for what I am. Um, those portraits, oh my God. Yeah, they're beautiful. What Insta for their house? I'm going to be back. Yeah, a quick AMSE's Instagram is called Shiny The God House. It's either Shiny The or Shiny The, like T H A. Like that. That's a Attitude. Spell. No, I just found it. I think it's the like T H E. Ooh, what is that? Shiny The God House. Oh, are you scroll like scrolled down? But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the <laughs> oh, that's so dope. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It is stunning. They are wow. so. Are they shorts? Is a quick game as he shorts? <laughs> they look tight. Can we just real quick Google? Because I Google assumed the that they were like five six, five seven. They don't look short. They look short to me in that photo. We're just gonna a quick a a mezzi height a seven figure deal. Good for them. Yeah, I know goals. What? They're 5'8". I told you. <laughs> I don't know. They don't look short at all. Ew, why is there weight on here? What is wrong with people? <laughs> like, why does that need to be reported? Ooh, look at that photo of them. Yeah, I was, I was wondering. Are you sure that's them? Mm -hmm, that was before they cut their hair. Okay. Yeah. Okay, not me getting distracted by the thirst no. trap. Okay, <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, so the point is, they have an Instagram. And it's Shiny the God House. And it's really stunning. And they're five eight. So yes, a seven figure deal. They are their romance book is being adapted by Michael B. Jordan's production company. Yeah, like they're making wow. moves, moves, and they've only been on the scene for three years. They they've come out with a book every single year since they popped up. No, maybe four years. Jeez. Three or four years. Every single year since Freshwater, they put out a new work. They have um, Freshwater is being adapted on FX. They have a seven-figure deal, and that book is being adapted by Michael B. Jordan. Like, unbelievable. How are people not going to say that's a god? <laughs> like, first of all, let's just be honest here. Who? No one could ever. No one could ever. No one has ever. Literally, like they were like trying to save water by not flushing the toilet, and now mm -hmm. look at them. Mm -hmm. Like that's mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm so I'm so proud of them. I simply could never. Could never. It's it's insane. Um, the cat goose gives me chills because he's so damn cute. Yeah, their cat is adorable, but also he looks like like a wrinkly thumb to me. 
<laughs> seen this wrinkly cat? thummy. Not a thummy. Oh my god. No. It's the cat is also very terrifying. The cat has its in Instagram too. Of course. Of course. It's it's alarming this cat to What's me. The... I don't like furless cats. They something's it, not right. Oh, is it those like Sphinx naked cats? I think so. It, it looks expensive, so probably. Oh god. Those are like two thousand dollars. No wow. Well, my friend's friend has one. Wait, where is it? I'm trying to look what's the Gus? Like G U S P O N. Like I think it's Gus Pun Pun. Okay. Oh. Like okay, that's cute. Oh, that's cute. But show them a photo. This cat looks evil. Like it looks like it's summoning. Oh, that one's cute though. Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> that one looked like it was summoning something. Okay, do that. Do that one. Okay, do that one. This one. Ew. <laughs> okay, I don't this like one. it. I don't like it. Something's wrong with it. It's <laughs> we need to like it just oh! Oh! That looks like a meme. It couldn't live in my house. I'll tell you that right now. Not in my bed. Oh, it's long. Ew, not long. Not length. <laughs> Gross. This is just Jan and Jesse chatting with each other. We just get to watch. Sorry. Oh, no. Where This is us censored. For real. The romance book. Yeah, Chanel, that's. That's what I think is being adapted, right? Their romance book. That's what they got the seven figure deal for. I'm pretty sure. Um, I really want to start doing random on freaking related, but I really want to start doing like book news, like news on like authors, like new books that are coming out and like recently announced books. Like, do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think um, we all need a little bit of that. Right? Like I want news about the actual like books. And like book cover releases, you know, like yeah, paperback releases, yeah, yeah. adaptations, all of that. Yeah, yeah, I really want that. Why am I saying yeah, 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 yeah? <laughs> yeah. I'm so tired. Oh, I'm so freaking sorry. Um, but he's furry. Oh, he does have fur. I'm sorry. It's just he's so horrific. He looks skinless to me. Um, <laughs> not the chicken posts. What? Thanks. <laughs> I went to look it up to tell folks, then got distracted by chicken posts, like of like drumsticks or like live chickens. Like, this is Bacock. Like your neighbor. My neighbor. My neighbor has chickens and is very unfriendly. I was walking by and I was like, I like your chickens. First of all, I'd be unfriendly too. And the neighbor was... just was like, and just like watched as I walked by. Like dead pan just followed me with her head, and I was like, okay. They have chickens like painted on their garage door, like they're obsessed. You'd think they'd be friendlier. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Jesse, you day that. Say you say that. that, but if you ever held it, not holding it, <laughs> it would melt your dead heart, I promise. I promise that's a negative. <laughs> I don't think so, Ruby. You couldn't pay me to hold Satan. Not me cuddling. Okay. Mm -mm. I couldn't do it. I look forward to the romance. I don't like a lot of romance, but I know they'll make a good one. I, look, I don't trust them. They, they were talking, no, let me finish. They were talking in a live about them writing this romance book. And they were like, yeah. You know, I'm excited to write it because, you know, romances have got to have a happy ending. And they were talking, they were connecting it to the magician who they write about, their ex-partner that they write about a lot in Dear Sentran. And the question that had been posed to them was, um, how, how are you going to go? How does it feel to go from writing a memoir where you talk at length about this man who just broke your heart and betrayed you? to writing a whole romance book. Like what, what is with that? And they were like, yeah, I think it's been cathartic. And then I they said- I was gonna say that. Yeah. Wow, not me being psychic. Yes, you're, you and them are just linked. Y'all are buddies. <laughs> I but, fucking wish. Right? Um, we're, but um, what was I saying? No, 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 it's fine. I'm just really tired. Cathartic interview, live um, romance from broken man. <laughs> man who broke them. <laughs> To a full blown. Why does romance. it sound like a, like a freaking 2013? Because it's a song like, like Boys Pop Like Rock. Girls. Yeah, yeah, it is. 
That's what I was saying. Like, why does this sound like freaking Skrillex wrote in these lines? Okay. Boys like girls. Boys like girls. Okay. So they were saying that they don't like, like, shoot. I'm sorry. I'm so tired, y'all. I can do this. I'm going to say this sentence. It's going to happen. They were saying (laughs) that it was cathartic to write about a romance after the magician sucking because romances have a happy ending. And so the reason I say I don't trust them is because I feel like they're telling us the romance is going to have a happy ending and we're going to be in love Mm. with it. We're going to be like, oh my God, that's so cute. And then then they're both going to die at the end. Yeah, exactly. We're going to be the broken men. Exactly. (laughs) You know, I just don't trust them. They're, they're going to, they're going to have, I don't trust that they're just going to truly, truly give us a fluffy romance. Yeah, there's no way. There's no way. Thank you. There's no way. Thank you. They're too deep for that. No, 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 I don't trust it. Just like I don't trust that cat. Um, like books and Lala used to do. It, yes, yeah. Books and Lala um, used to make those same exact types of videos, and I just freaking loved them. I loved them. Um, yes. Yes. Yes, no. <laughs> okay, I'm sitting here and all listening to y'all speak, Jesse. All because it's so incoherent. Or- no. Because <laughs> you make everyone else sound stupid. That's so funny because I literally spent two full minutes <laughs> okay. three seconds ago trying to say a quick message is writing were... a happy ending. Like that was all I said. I didn't say y'all were perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like the bar is in hell. <laughs> it's actually in hell. I gotta go. No, don't leave. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Rewind yourself and listen back. I don't think, I don't think nobody wants to hear that again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm begging you to do that even as reels would be perfect. Ooh, I like that idea as real Chanel. Look at you. We tried making a TikTok for an hour and a half yesterday. Let's not get them into reels. (laughs) We made a TikTok yesterday. Of a, it was a Rick and Morty TikTok, and it was a TikTok that nobody asked us to make. Nobody else is doing this particular TikTok. I don't know why. We don't even know if there's the audio. (laughs) <laughs> that's right we don't even know oh my god so um yeah. if jesse starts doing reels on a regular basis don't expect videos for the next i'm just kidding it's true though yeah like don't i'm, I'm just gonna switch to doing reels and just quit you've well, done a couple reels i have like akasha's hunger game i want to do part two of akasha in the hunger games because that was really fun to do yeah, that's right. Thank you, Ari. So Body Queer Read said that they're also writing a poetry book because why not? I was talking to them about that the other day. Just casually? How are you? Excuse me. Tell me more about this conversation that you had with a quick game. That's I'm waiting. <laughs> I could sit here all day. Just casually drop that. Right? Not y'all being best friends. Yes, I did know about the poetry book. But I totally forgot about that. And then they're also working on an adult fantasy. Oh. Yeah. I can see that. I'm begging for gods as main characters. Like, you know, it's going to be God heavy. Like, it's got to have godhood. But if it doesn't, I'm going to be really upset. Can you imagine, like, a god writing gods? Can you imagine liquid midnight? Oh, my God. (laughs) Not liquid midnight. We're buddy reading, which is steeped in gold. Unfortunately. And that's why I fell asleep last night. For this 24 I told you that is not that is not the book. I told you the world building is like it's not. Mm-mm, mm-mm, you tried. I'm gonna finish it. I have an expensive edition. It's so beautiful too. After finishing that book, I decided that I'm not gonna pay fifty dollars for the special edition that I wanted. I'm glad, not, yeah, it's not glad, it. yeah, it's not worth it. If it had been a five star read, I would have bought that gorgeous edition. The mm-hmm. um, very. Li- the Fairy Loot edition of Witch is Keeping Gold. Beautiful. Literally art. Beautiful. But then the lines like Liquid Midnight just <laughs> turned me off. Okay, so no, y'all sound so smart. To be fair, I typed that before <laughs> that sentence. <laughs> this app is so funny. Um, yeah, again, a quick AMSZ. Just no, but nobody trusts that this is going to be like a Casey McQuiston book. Oh, no. You know the name <laughs> drop? You know, like, nobody's like, yeah, the quick game is going to give us Christina Lauren. Oh, you know what I mean? It's not. 
Yeah. It's not happening. Mm-mm. On the first page is boys to destroy us. I can't. <laughs> Although I'm guessing because all of their main characters have been trans, I'm guessing that their main characters are also going to be trans in the romance. And I would really love a trans romance from Akweke. I think that would be really beautiful. Um, but we'll see. <laughs> Watch they write like two cis white men. <laughs> white men <laughs> and their names are brody and jake jake i was gonna say jacob <laughs> creepy stop get out of my head they're out of fl- they're out of fraternity they're out of fraternity <laughs> not me writing the book <laughs> talking to whom <laughs> <laughs> the casual drop for real ari you can't you can't just okay That's anyway insane. we skipped a few chapters for real okay sorry one thing about one thing I love about a quick case work getting so much praise and recognition <laughs> is that their great representation for how complex and beautiful black queerness is. What do they identify as by the way? So I absolutely agree the way that they represent the black diaspora, how they center queerness, especially of non-Western individuals, I think is really beautiful. Um and um, and not even just black individuals, but also South Asian individuals because they're also South Asian. Mm-hmm. And um, what do they identify as by the way? So uh, the last that I had read, and this was a few years ago, um, they identified as queer and trans. And for anybody who is watching this and doesn't know, they are a, they are a non-human Obanje. Um, which essentially is a spirit. So I don't know if that's what you were asking, you know, if you meant like queer identity or spiritual identity. Um, But yeah, they identified as queer, but in Dear Centron, not once do they like call themselves queer. And in interviews since the interview that I read, I've never heard a Kweke say like, I'm queer, but like their transness is automatically queering. You know what I mean? So I don't know if they still use the term queer for themselves, if that, Fits, you know, um, I was actually hoping that they would talk about their um, like sexual preferences or like what attracts them um, in this book, especially because um, as somebody who is deeply spiritually invested, I find spiritual energy attractive. A lot of times that overrides like my aesthetic preferences for a person if that makes sense so I was really curious if it was the same way for a Kweke like perhaps what they look at isn't gender like that's not what attracts them but it's the spirit of the the individual and I don't mean like pansexual though you know what I mean like I mean in a metaphysical spirituality sense like auras etc if any of that makes sense sense. but they didn't talk about it in the book so it really doesn't matter (laughs) like no it doesn't no it doesn't matter but I feel like they um it either is a complete like non-thought to them Mm -hmm. or they intentionally decided that they didn't want to talk about it. You know what I mean? That's why I say like, it it doesn't matter because um, yeah. So if any of y'all like hear anything, if they speak about it or something, feel free to DM me, like give me the tea. (laughs) Cause I want to know. Okay. Um, They have a lot. They have a habit of finding my live tweets as I'm reading. I was literally interacting with them the whole time I was reading Vivek and Dear Sundram. Not a celebrity. <laughs> I'm too jealous to be happy for you. Trans <laughs> characters in adult romance are severely lacking. Preach, I am reading one right now. And outside of that, I can't think of a single thing else. Yeah, for adult too, adult trans romances. The only thing I can think of is Ana Louis, Ana Louis, Ana, <laughs> Ana Luisa, the jewelry company. Ana Lee knew it. I don't know why I'm doing this. Yeah, me neither. Annalie Newitz, who wrote Autonomous and The Future of Another Timeline. But those aren't sp- like strictly romance. And those characters are trans. Yeah, you're right to know. That's a bummer. Yeah, definitely pull up Google. Um, what are you reading right now, Chanel? <laughs> what? Stop, I gotta pee. <laughs> no, 
know Will Ferrell making an appearance. So, oh my god, I'm obsessed. Okay. <laughs> I feel I feel like queer isn't even in their vocab anymore. They seem to be past labeling, if that makes sense. I mean, it's a very human thing to do, you know? Exactly, Chloe. That's why that's exactly why I say like I wonder if what they're attracted to is spirituality, other spirits. You know what I mean? Because gender is such a non thing for them. Um but it's really interesting that you say this also because I talked about this a little bit with Megan of Books and Blazers on her live for, like, she was doing... She's adorable. I love her. She's amazing. She's wonderful. But she was doing, I forget the name of it, but, like, hosting queer bookstagrammers on her Instagram every week in June, I believe, on Tuesdays. And what we were talking about is how the term queer and the way that queerness is looked at and used is very Western. Um, and just like the whole way that we conduct conversations about queerness in, in the West specifically. And so it's also very important to think about a Quake being a non-Western individual. And I'm not saying that nobody outside of the West, like everyone outside of the West does, doesn't use the word queer. It's not what I'm saying. You know what I mean? But like um, the way that we, a lot of us in the West use the term queer and like are, like are quick to bring it up and that kind of thing, I think is very much grounded in, in Westernism. And they're very, very well. I mean, I know that there is just like different terminology, different ways to describe and label oneself outside of the West, but it's all still queerness. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So um, because they have, and they've written quite a bit about very intentionally centering the indigenous, like the West African indigenous, indigeneity that they embody. Um, so that's another reason why I'm wondering if they don't use the term queer because, you know, it might not feel like a part of the, it might not feel culturally comfortable to them. I don't know. I'm, this is all speculation. Look at all these ugly ass covers. Yeah, those are rough. Of trans adult romance. Not a trans romance called Grind. <laughs> I'm screaming. Screaming. Okay. <laughs> five out of five stars. They did say they tried to make their lover a god. Exactly. Exactly. And so I feel like that idea of elevation and of spiritual binding um, and bonding is, but again, like I'm not a god. I can't, I'm not even equipped to analyze or like speculate on a quick aim as these states. You know what I mean? Like not even in a self-deprecating way. I just like literally... I just li literally could never. Um, Guess he's a god to me. All I know. Stop. I love you. <laughs> Not my eyebrows having a seizure. I love you too. We were having a cute moment and then you vomited <laughs> into your glass. <laughs> I didn't even touch Ooh. the liquid. Love and Other Disasters, an entity romance coming out in, in January. Is that adult? Malka, it's called Love Study. Ooh, that's a great title by Chris Ripper. Okay, I would not want to piss that person off. <laughs> the love interest is non-binary and the author is also non-binary. Wonderful. Thank you, Chanel. I'm going to um, – actually, both of these titles, sorry to, like, pull up my phone, but I am going to save these so that I can post them on Envy Book Club. Is it Love and Other Natural Disasters? That sounds like a book that I've heard of. But there are two of them. Do you hear my belt keep squeaking? Yeah. June 8th, 2021. Okay, not that one. We are live. <laughs> this was in 2008, so not that one. I don't know. Okay. Okay. So I'm not finding love and other disasters. Lo oh, not me. Love and... <laughs> what is a non-binary <laughs> person? <laughs> That's what popped up. Okay. Okay, we're doing great here. Uh, Love and Other Disasters by Alex Cash. Okay, this book doesn't exist. No, I'm just kidding. Somebody DM me this book. I'm clearly fighting for my life here, so this isn't working. You're in the boxing ring. I mean, no, not the boxing ring. I don't want to. Uh, I also love that they wrote about the doctor that was inspired by Freshwater to write. Wait, I just started over. I also love that they wrote about the doctor that was inspired by Fre Okay. <laughs> like, click on the thing. Sorry. So you could read it from here. I don't like the Danielle. <laughs> okay. I also love that they wrote a barrel. <laughs> Y'all should see me helping them with their thumbnail. You should see me in crown. I gotta pee. <laughs> 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 okay. 
<laughs> not abandonment. Okay. Inspired by freshwater. I'm so done with her. Inspired by freshwater to write an essay for a medical convention to begin considering indigenous realities while treating patients. Wonderful. We love to see it. We love to hear about it. Um, yes, Chanel. As a Nigerian from the same tribe as Akweke, their work means so much to me, even though I've only read two books from them. I'm just very amazed by them always. I love that for you, Chanel. I love that y'all have that connection um, because y'all are both Ipo. And I dig that. I think that that is really fantastic that you have an author from your tribe who is not only just fantastic, like has written books that you enjoy, but you get to see an author from your tribe thriving and I mean thriving like I'm really happy for you that's that's a beautiful thing um oh good okay Malcolm already got me to add it to our TBR and Goodreads which is fantastic um also a great thing is a messy being successful forces close people to acknowledge that some human identity is not simple and even less clear cut, whether it's gender, spirituality, or S, close-minded people. Yes, absolutely. I think that a Quake, a, um, like somebody who is very much grounded in spirit and is non-human, um, but a Quake is really opening up channels for these kinds of discussions. And also they, I like how they have brought to light um, the realities of people who are, I forget what they what they address these people um, as in the book, but people who are just very much grounded in the spirit but are still human beings versus people that are uh, individuals, entities that are spiritual and non-human. You know what I mean? I'm, like I said, I'm tired, so I'm, I can't like bring up the information, but they label the uh, YA author, Daniel Jose Older as, one of those people who is just very spiritually, I forget the freaking word. I think it was spirit skinned that they use. I think that was the terminology. Um, and Daniel Jose Older wrote the magical realism fantasy, not, magical realism series about gentrification in Brooklyn. It was like shadow, shadow keeper, shadow shaker, something like that. I read the first book. Beats me, but I like this cover. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I do remember Malka. Malka. Tell, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's on our TBR. Anita Thanks Kelly. for sending that to me, Malka. Mm -hmm. Malka. I also love that they have friends who are entities from many different ontologies. Ontologies. Shadow Shaper. Thank you, Malka. Yes. This is exactly what I was trying to say. Not me spitting everywhere. This is <laughs> exactly <laughs> caressing my arm. I'm rubbing it in. <laughs> demonetized um yeah i love that a quake talks about spiritual realities for not just themselves but multiple people multiple people in their friendship work friend their friendship unit but also just multiple individuals and i like how they're saying i'm not the only one and i'm doing this work in service to uh, in service to their gods, yes, but in service to um, other spirit skinned, spiritually inclined, et cetera, individuals. And we really dig that, you know. Um, Chanel says, okay, not to fangirl, but imagine speaking to a quick A, I would have so many questions. I, my dream, literal dream, is to interview a quick A. Then I can die. And be published by Akweke's new publishing house. <laughs> that doesn't exist. That doesn't exist, yes. But hopefully will. Oh. Honestly, I'm still confused. I won't lie, because identifying as non-human is a foreign concept to me. I hope that they'll have a discussion or interview to shine a light and answer the question. Dear Senthodon answers that question so well. Like that was that book is essentially them answering that very question so i highly recommend dear Senthodon for that they have a specific chapter very like carefully laying that out too um because yeah i totally i totally feel you on being like what does this mean i don't understand i don't know how to process how to process this 
Um, but the best way that I can phrase it shorthand is that they are a spirit who was reincarnated into this world and is placed in a human vessel. And so the, the vessel is a shell containing a soul that is not a human being. Does this make sense? I explained that very poorly, but um, essentially like Obanje are, I don't want to say this incorrectly, but Obanje are, I don't want to say trickster spirits, but they are spirits known to cause trouble. And so a Kweke is an Obanje living here with the rest of us. That's the best like shorthand way I can explain it. And I did that very poorly because <laughs> very little sleep. <laughs> Um, but I actually spent a lot of time thinking about how to shorthand explain a quick AMZ to people, you know, because I talk about them so much in casual conversation. And then people are like, wait, what? They're a god. Like, I don't right. understand how to, yeah. you know. They think it's not fantasy. What are you talking about? You know? Yeah. Well, <laughs> in a lot of a lot of us thought that Freshwater was fantasy when we first read it. And then a quick A was like, no, it's spiritual realism. And I think that was when a bunch of us like really like sat down and started thinking and grappling because the idea of identifying, of saying, I'm not a human being to Western folks is inherently um, fantastical, right? The, the, and even saying like, I'm spiritually connected. I talked to my ancestors, which a quick aid is, doesn't have an ancestry because there are no Banje who don't have ancestors. But for example, saying like, I speak to my ancestors. I have a spirit self. I have telepathic connections with certain people. Like that automatically is, fantastical to a lot of us in the West, to a lot of us who are Christians, etc. So it makes, it stands to reason why so many of us like read Freshwater and was like, this is fantasy, but it's not, you know, that's just you reading Freshwater through a, you know, a, a Western lens. Um, I just adore them. Okay. In Christianity, there is literally a concept of identifying people as small gods. It's not as foreign a concept as people think. Thank you for saying that because I did not know that as somebody who is not Christian. Um, but it's also really interesting, and I, I'm sure you did this intentionally, but Akweke identifies as a small god in the book and says, I'm a small god working on being a big god. And I just loved that because when I first read it I was like I'm a big kid now <laughs> like this is so cute and I just like can't wait for them to be a big god you know like mm -hmm. like they're still evolving and changing and growing and like this is them if this is them as a small guy I was gonna say yeah can you even imagine can you even imagine no. but mind you like a has been writing um publicly for what four years imagine That's like a fraction of it's insane. I just, oh, I I just get chills. Like all the worship they say in the book, they're like, uh, they say this multiple times in the book. They say all of my worshipers flee at some point. I will worship you forever. Okay. I ain't going nowhere. Okay. Not this worshiper okay? at the altar, like backing up. <laughs> backing up <laughs> <in> the palace. <laughs> I am reading the Gilded Ones, <laughs> and there's a scene in the in the Gilded Ones where the main character has to back up. <laughs> Not Why the shaka. That... <laughs> has to is like before the emperor and has to back up all the way. <laughs> you pinched my finger. Sorry. Are you crying? I'm impaled. No, yeah, it's fine. Go ahead. Backing up all the way out the palace doors because it's rude to turn your back on the emperor. And you know how large, you know, like an emperor's chambers are. So just can you imagine backing up for 15 feet? You know, just because can't, I can't, I can't. But that would be me if I ever saw a quick game. She probably has strong calves. Backing up. This is Ooh. not a sexual joke. Who? Strong calves. <laughs> the main character in the Guild of Women. Yeah, she, she must. For like what? Well, she's also a half a demon, so oh, I think she's got a strong everything. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I haven't read the Gilded Ones. Not me having Asian flush. Oh my god. I'm gonna go get more. Do you need a refill? <laughs> oh, no, you don't. I'm sorry. I'll drink faster. I didn't know it was a race. <laughs> um, 
I feel like most spiritualism that you're unfamiliar with feels like fantasy to people unfamiliar with that spiritualism. Thank you, Malka. Thank you. And um, yeah, I, I feel this. And I also think that we as human beings, not me pretending to be a philosopher, but we as human beings strive, not strive, but we automatically latch onto the familiar. Could you have filled that glass anymore? Yeah, actually, there's a lot of room. They're being dramatic. That is so full. Okay, not me judging you. Yeah. Not alcohol shaming. Care to explain why y'all didn't visit me two weeks ago when we announced that we were going to? Yep. Okay. I digress. Are you trying to start a thing? <laughs> yeah, so we have witnesses. <laughs> if I die. I will sick Akasha on you. Just oh. kidding. She would probably attack me instead. <laughs> Akasha loves Jan. Yeah. Um, she kissed me instead of them yesterday. Yeah, it was really rude. I don't even remember what I was saying. I sorry. No, it's okay. I'm pretty sure I did familiar. This to latching onto the familiar. Latching onto the familiar. Thank you. So that's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> latching onto the familiar. And when I personally read Freshwater, when it came out, we were reading it and automatically was one of those people who thought that it was a um about did dissociative identity disorder like the very first time that i read it sorry a man just screamed outside <laughs> the window it was really weird the very first time that we read it because we have a parent with did and like that was automatically the way that i read it because it was the very first time um not the very first time but like the only experiences that i at that point in my life had had the only representation that i had had with a person who has um, multiple selves was automatically DID, if that makes sense. And it didn't even occur to me because that was my entire experience. Um, and also somebody else who personally is multiple self, that was automatically where I went. And it wasn't until I dug into interviews and reread the book that I realized it wasn't a work of mental illness, but a work of spirit. And so where I'm going with this is when Malka says, I feel that most spiritualism that you're unfamiliar with feels like fantasy to people unfamiliar with it. I think it also goes with not just the fantastical, but like you automatically reduce it to something that looks familiar to you. And what was familiar to me was dissociative identity disorder, which for those of you who don't know what that is, it's it was used. It used to be called multiple personality disorder, um, and then they changed the name in 2010, I think. So, oh my God, why is it under distress? This is what this comment is why oh, I'm under distress. We literally spent an hour one day. <laughs> well, I'm glad you and a quick game as your best friends. Okay, weird flex, but okay. <laughs> so no, 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 no. I would, no, that's really if cool. If I were them. I would, hello, what's your name? Hi, my name is Jesse, and a quick game is my best friend. Hi. That's how I want to talk about y'all. <laughs> Ask Cammy. I'd be bleeding out time. in the ER like I fell while rollerblading. You know, my, like, tummy is gushing blood or something, and I'd be like, a quick game is he's my best friend. <laughs> DM them and let them know where I'm at. Name someone more dramatic, I swear to God. <laughs> None of y'all understand how deep. Deep. My love is for them. Deep. Deep. Okay. Let's go, dear Centran. That's a cap. You also said that this book was more accessible than Freshwater. Can you elaborate on that? Yes. So Freshwater does not explain anything to you. It doesn't explain what an Obanje is. It doesn't explain what's going on with Aza, the main character. So um, when Ada's hearing these voices and being guided by these other selves, you don't know what's going on. You know what I mean? None of that is explained to you specifically. It's not laid out what is happening. In Dear Centran, Akweke says, this is what an Obanje is. This is the history and the ontology of Obanje. They even talk a little bit about, um, I'm not sure if it's, cons I, no, 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 it's not mythos, but they, they, they just go into a lot of detail. And then I understand that says a lot. It was very, so. very clearly laid out. Um, in, in my opinion, of course, clear means different things to different people, you know, um, and I want to be mindful of that. But um, 
I'm trying to think of another example besides that, but um, just the straw. Oh, another uh, good way to explain it is the markings that they have on their face. Like they explained the carvings, like they went through a ritual and carved their face. They explained that well, they explained why that they like had their nipples removed, why they um, altered their body in several different ways versus Adza does those things in the book, but you don't have an explanation. So a lot of people were just like, Ada's transgender, you know, which, yeah, they are, <laughs> they are trans, but um, you know what I mean? Like, it's just all more explained. And then um, there was another thing about that that I wanted to comment on. Um, da -da 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 -da. This live has been so energizing. Thank you all for waking me up. Yes, but thank you. <laughs> Shut up. It's my last day and they were taking a freaking nap. I'm literally sleeping on you. Get it? Like, slept on jammed. Like, you oh, have like, slept on book series? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Obviously, that okay. wasn't a funny joke. No. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just more accessible. I don't know why I'm trying to explain every point in the book. It's just more clear. I think that to anybody who is Western, um, who is, let me rephrase, anybody who is non Ipo, non Obanje, I think that Dear Senthadon explained very, very straightforward what's going on with a Kweke. So I hope that that helps. I'm not part of anything a Kweke is, and I understand. Word. That makes sense. Word. If that tells you anything is what I was saying earlier. Yes, I hear you. Sorry, I'm so dumb when it comes to fantasy and stuff too. So like, I hear you. Understanding. Ooh, not me nodding like, yeah, you're dumb. <laughs> That's not what yeah, I yeah, meant. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But as soon as you said dumb, I was like, yeah. That's so dumb. <sighs> it's okay, we have witnesses of the bullying. Stop Asian hate. I'm not allowed to comment, so I'm just gonna leave it alone. I'm from the Yor Yoruba Ifa. I'm, gu I'm guessing that this is Ifa, Yoruba Ifa background. So we have a similar concept and we're taught in our background as non-binary people to embrace our multiplicity. Uh, so for me, and this was a part of the reason why Freshwater meant so much and why a quick AMS means so much to us is that I've never felt seen or represented by the term non-binary or by the description of what it means to be non-binary in the United States, because that identity is so much centered um, and claimed. Let me rephrase. The attention that, that identity gets, who gets centered in the term non-binary is usually whiteness. And the explanations that uh, non-binary folks in the US often give for like what non-binary means to them has not at all been my experience um, being somebody who is non-binary because of my spirituality. You know what I mean? And so I feel like a lot of us who, I'm not Yoruba, um, but like a lot of us who are in the black diaspora, for example, or even just the, the non-white diaspora. Um, for example, I know that uh, a lot of, never mind, I'm not, I'm not even gonna speculate, whatever. The point is, um, be, and it's uh, we're non-binary because of aspects in our culture that don't translate into whiteness or into like U.S. Western culture. Does that make more sense? Mm -hmm. than explaining it. Yeah. Um, and that was a part of like why I really latched onto a quick game as because this was the first time where I was like, oh, like this feels like my non-binary. This is like the closest I've ever felt versus when like white non-binary folks or even just like Western non-binary folks often like explain what their non-binary identity means to them. It's always felt like not, distant. yeah, it's always felt different. It's, it's felt like it didn't distant. match. Oh. Distant, yes, <laughs> distant. And um, which is why like I use the term non-binary because it's the closest thing that I have. But is it time for us to do your live? Oh no, I was just, I mean. It's at no, seven, isn't it? Seven fifteen. Okay. It's not a big deal. So, I can be late. No one cares about me. <laughs> I care about you. Akasha damn sure care about you. Oh yeah. She I, I told Akasha yesterday, I was like, give me kisses. And she went, <laughs> just started licking Jan. Loved I was it. like, ah, rude. I felt superior for once. You life, are superior. Ever. You are lake superior. <laughs> if you were a lake, you'd be superior. Uh, and if I were a lake, cute. I'd be the Mississippi. 
Damn, that was good. First of all, wait, there's not a Lake Mississippi. It's Mississippi River. That's awkward. It's not. I take it back. I'm sorry. It's the Mississippi River. Could you just let me no. have? No. <laughs> um, not you keeping blackness from thriving. <laughs> no, don't end the broadcast. Jan is racist. <laughs> Not the time. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Janice racist. That's no, that's not. It's happen. true, actually. It's just Stop so making I Janice racist happen. It's already happened. Look, there's a hashtag. I didn't make the hashtag a thing. Malcolm made the hashtag a thing. It's okay to call Jan out on her racism. I think that everybody needs to be held accountable. <laughs> no, it is. It's true. Is that Shaq? My favorite thing is to show no Jan. No, that did not happen. I hate this, Malka. I showed Jan. Let's ban Malka. <laughs> Jan, Jan saw a picture. No, of a no, black man. that's not what happened. That looked, Jesse said nothing. Do you like know that Jan. meme? That meme with like the whatever, and then I thought the it was whatever. Like, you know that meme with the whatever? That's what I said. That's what I said. You know the meme with the whatever? The meme with the guy who's like. I don't know. But then I was like, oh, the Shaq one with the birthday of the... Because they did the same it's fucking not how gesture. It it's not how it happened. I showed her a black man who was no! like, Shaq. You did. And she was like, is that Shaq? They looked nothing alike. I could have showed you Meryl Streep. They like, showed me Shaq? after. I said, is that is the, the Shaq meme? At, and then they, they showed me the picture. The meme that they were talking about. Jan's racist. Okay, so in, is there a word that would allow us black people that do not fall in the binary gender to feel more represented? You're right. I do feel like envy is often coined with whiteness. Yes. And um, I also feel like, yeah, it is It is coined with whiteness. And this is no disrespect to obviously BIPOC folk who use the term envy. Um, but I just don't think that it comfortably, I think that a lot more BIPOC people would use would feel comfortable identifying as non-binary if it wasn't so centered in whiteness. You know what I mean? If it also included like, like for example, um, part of me like identifying as non-binary is because of my family's magic. Like being my, like coming from a family where my mother and my abuela are brujas. And you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, that's, that's connected to my non-binary identity because it's connected to my culture. So, um, to answer your actual question, is there a word that would allow us Black people that do not fall in the binary gender to feel more represented? I think that there are several words that you could use depending on where you are in the diaspora. But I don't think, to my knowledge, that there is like an, an, a, red, a ready word that just addresses like Black identity that doesn't you know what I'm saying? That doesn't fit into the, the gender binary and specifically encompasses blackness. If I am incorrect, please let me know because I would love to know. Um, but I'm also a huge fan of self-naming. I'm a huge fan of that. And um, if a word doesn't exist for what you are, for who you are, for how you move through the world, fucking make it up. Make it up. Because you, you're going to make up that word and it is going to click something inside of somebody else. And most importantly, it's going to be comfortable for you. So if that word doesn't exist, you can do research and figure out like, um, like looking up like different, what, are the, what is that? It's like suffix. Prefix. Suffix. Thank you. Yes. I love that you knew what I was trying to say and figure <laughs> it out. You know what I mean? Wow. I'm proud. Like I think, and I'm not saying that, um, what is their, their name? They, they changed their name. I'm trying to remember it. Uh, what is their name now? Oh, not me remembering my friend's name. Oh my gosh, no, I'm going to get it. Oh, shoot. Okay, one of my really good friends, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> I um, refers to themselves as arc gender. Um, and so I don't know if that's something that they coined, but I knew instantly what they were trying to say. You know, like archaic gender, like before. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's hard to explain, but I, it's something that I feel in my body when I hear the word. And so I think it's a matter of playing around with the language. Putting the pieces together. Raviv. Nice. Raviv. Raviv um, uses the term arc gender, and I really love that for them. 
Um, is the memification of education happening now? No. Can we make Janice racist a meme? No. We're ending the live. <laughs> okay. I'm so personally ending the live. And make slides to teach Jan about memes. Yes, I'm gonna do that. So Okay, they thought that that monkey was a man, okay? That side eye monkey meme. It looked like a man, like a a muppet, a man puppet. So tell me who needs muppet. the memification oh my education. God. I was gonna say something. Um, is it a man? Is that why they were called the Muppets? But they were literally animals, so yeah. <laughs> I, have a, I have a science. Degree, they thought everyone. there was a light bulb, but there wasn't. Not a light bulb. A lot of times in a lot of cultures, there's no term for it because before colonization, they didn't need it. Preach! You just like dropping all of the freaking wisdom. Yeah, why am I here? Come on, let's... why am I here? Okay, let's just <laughs> add them to the queer. We're real for real. Also, I love that that. That homie just dropped in, dropped a comment, like a troll comment, because it was it was really adorable, like oddly positive, and then left. Like it was probably a bot, maybe. How do bots? Okay, we're not gonna get into this conversation. Um, because you know we'll be here forever. Yeah. So on Jan's channel, aka Janel, <laughs> on my channel, on on her channel, we're about to do reading sprints from seven to ten, seven fifteen to ten. I'll be finishing Dear Santa. Finishing Dear Santa. <laughs> the yes. irony. I'm gonna be finishing up most of my july tbr jesus <laughs> they everything is june to me i'm still stuck in june i'm not ready to let it go no i was gonna say it oh my bad you've read two books and i haven't finished one. i have read two books well finish one book and read one full novella true 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 true. but still not to discredit your you know accomplishments but but to discredit still more than mine i'm dying so yeah, head over to Jan Agaton if you want to do some reading sprints with us and hear more Jananigans and Messy Jesse. Thank you. No more Jan is racist though. Not on my channel. I didn't bring it up. Not on my channel. Not on my watch. I didn't do hashtag Jan is racist. Not That's welcome. Not on my clock. <laughs> on my silver alarm clock. Oh my god. If you don't let that clock go. You know what time it is? It's time, time for you to let it go. <laughs> Oh my gosh, wait, I'm going to end this with a joke. <laughs> you want to hear one of my jokes? <laughs> I'm going to be a comedian someday, y'all. Okay. Stick what? Ge Sorry. What? What gender? Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> not a controversial joke. It's not that controversial. Why did I say that? Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> it's not controversial. It's not problematic, I swear. <laughs> The fact that you have to say that. You. Okay. Shut up. SMH. <laughs> God, you're making me nervous now. What gender? What gender are puppies when they are born? Oh my God, this one? <laughs> we already established that this one wasn't a good one. Yes. Okay, well, not you planting, not you coloring their experience so that it's negative. I thought of the brain real quick. Okay. What gender are puppies when they are born? They're girls. <laughs> Why puppies? Because grr. Okay, but bears grr. grr lions bears grr. Bears grr. Tigers they just... grr. It's literally in the name tiger. Oh. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming. Love you. Bye. Wait, announce your August. Announce your August book club pick. Um, I don't know. Damn. Oh. Um, the August book club pick, I made the graphics for them and then lost them. So um Yeah, now you give me a heart attack for nothing. <laughs> well, um that's a good exit statement, you know. It would have been. Naomi taught me that one. See? Cat laughed. Whitney said, bye. I'm done. <laughs> I think Cat laughed. I helped you. Damn. Christian said, end it now. <laughs> Yikes. Okay. We're leaving. I will stay tuned on the um, Enemy Book Club Instagram if you want to know what our August book is, even go. though it's August 1st. I love you. I'm sorry for who I am as an entity. Me too. Not Alexa popping in right as we're leaving. Aww. Hi. I love you. We're leaving. I'm so sorry. But hi. But join us for reading oh, sprints. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're about to do reading sprints on Jan Agaton. Oh, we're a minute late. For we're you. a minute late. Um, which I'm leaving um, her channel in the comment section. Bye. We'll be on till 10. Yes. Three hours. Yes. Two and 45. 44.
But yes, this is two, four. Bye. Okay, bye. I'm smart.